Bless the Lord, who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and wordly magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order 
the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. A covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me, and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 20 to 33. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. 
Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In this season of Lent, we have been reading the book of Job. And Job explores the difficult question of God's relationship to human suffering and invites us to trust, to trust God's wisdom and to trust God's character. Reading the book of Job and reflecting on Jesus' own suffering on the cross, it is clear that this walk of faith does not make us immune to suffering. We will experience disappointment, loss, grief, and even death. And what Job and Jesus and the, our gospel for this morning, the things that they have in common is that our life will contain peaks and valleys, highs and lows, death and renewal. The 24th verse in the 12th chapter of the Gospel of John, coming from our Gospel reading from this morning reads, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. There is a pattern of death and rebirth that is found within our lives and within our world. Each one of us could preach a sermon about how we have experienced loss and renewal at some point within our lives. Reflect on the times in your life in which you have seen both loss and renewal. If you have ever fallen in love and committed your life to another, then you had to let parts of your former life go so that you could then begin a new life and make space for this new presence within your life. If you are a parent, you know that you make sacrifices in order for new life to grow and emerge within this new child. And then parents continually are letting go of their children so that they may grow up in their own way. If you have been a caregiver, you know about sacrifice. You could name the parts of your life that died so that the other might live the remaining time of their lives with dignity and compassion and love. And I could go on career decisions and changes, health realities, for every choice that we make, for every yes that we proclaim, there is a no. 
at least one no, and perhaps many even more. This is the pattern found within nature. You can see it in the changing of the seasons, the falling leaves and then the new buds of spring. You see it every day in the setting and the rising of the sun. This is pattern of death and rebirth is innate within our lives. And it's in the Bible. Abram left his country and kindred so that he might make a new nation. He is renamed Abraham and he becomes a blessing to all the families of the earth. Jacob sheds his old identity and was wounded so that he can become a new person, a new person by the name of Israel with new life. James and John left their father and their boats and their nets to become disciples, disciples of Jesus and fishers of people. It's everywhere in the Bible, this pattern of loss and renewal, this dying and rising, this letting go and then getting back this leaving and returning. It is the core of our baptismal covenant. And we hear it every time that we come together to break bread at the Eucharistic feast. When we say the words in unison, Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. What needs to die in your life so that new life can arise? What needs to die so that something new can take root and arise? This gospel passage from John is very significant in John's retelling of Jesus's journey to the cross. These words in John are Jesus's last words said publicly. And these words are focused on his impending death. Greeks come to Philip to say, we wish to see Jesus. We wish to see this Jesus, the one who turned water into wine. We wish to see this Jesus, the one who turned over the tables in the temple and cleansed the temple. We want to see the one who healed those who were sick. We want to see this Jesus, the one who fed 5,000 with a few loaves of bread and a couple of fish. We want to see this one, this Jesus, who walks on water. We wish to see Jesus. And so Philip tells Andrew, and once he gets Andrew, Philip and Andrew then go to Jesus together. And what Jesus responds with this desire to see Jesus, he responds with these words. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. That is Jesus's response to the eagerness of those who want to see his glory. That is Jesus's response. When we follow Jesus, Jesus is pointing us toward the fact that death is not a period, but a comma. It is always followed by something new and growing. It is never the end of the story. That's what Easter tells us. And I'm not just talking about physical death here. I'm talking about all the deaths, the thousands of deaths that we experience in our lifetime. The lost of loved ones, the loss of a relationship or health or opportunities or dreams, deaths that we didn't want or even ask for. But following Jesus 
is not a spectator sport. You can't be a bystander on the sidelines. It is a way to be followed. It is a path to be walked. It is a life to be lived. It's being a grain of wheat that falls on the ground and dies so that it might bear fruit. And just as the Greeks are looking to see Jesus, that is where we see Jesus as well. We see Jesus in the letting go, in the emptying, in the surrendering, in the leaving behind, in the dying. Because those losses make space for new life to arise. And so on this fifth Sunday in Lent, perhaps God is giving you the space, the invitation to let go, to surrender, to empty yourself. And our letting go gives God space in order to work, to make all things new. And why would we want to cling to live as isolated, single, self-enclosed grains of wheat? And God is saying that we will bear much fruit on the other side. To let go, to surrender. And in doing so, maybe we will see Jesus. This pattern of death, and rebirth will be present throughout Holy Week. And that's why we are hearing this text on this fifth Sunday in Lent, the Sunday before Palm Sunday and the beginning of a Holy Week. It's our preparation for this sacred journey because we know how Holy Week ends. We know that on the other side of Holy Week is Easter and an empty tomb, a dawning of a new day, new life, rebirth and resurrection. And we also know that we cannot get to Easter without there being Good Friday, without there being disappointment and suffering and death. For that, brings meaning to Easter. And so we see the transformation of this single grain through the hope of Easter turn into the bread of new life. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Amen.
let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially during this time of pandemic. Give them courage and hope in their troubles. Bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled. On each Sunday during the season of Lent, we fondly remember a few of our beloved parishioners and family members who died this past year. Diane and I used to meet in the parking lot for Lectio Divina on Tuesdays, about the same time. We arrive at the same time. And I would ask her, how are you doing today? And she would say, oh, I'm well. And I said, oh my, let's talk about that. I understand. And then I picked up the phrase myself because sometimes I felt well. And we had a little discussion before we went in to Lectio Divina. And we decided when we came out of Lectio Divina, it'd be salt. And sure enough, we usually had a lovely uh, ending, and we would go uh, from Lectio Divina to the parking lot, and we could laugh and talk about what kind of day we were going to have, and our load was lighter. She was so divine. She gave me two or three Bibles. I am so blessed. I will not part with them. 
And one was a beautiful edition of the King James Version of, of the of, of Bible, Old and New Testament. I, I miss my friend, Diane. Our wonderful mom, Diane Rossi, went to heaven on Friday, November 27th, the day after Thanksgiving. She was gentle and kind, strong and resilient, dedicated and faithful. She had the warmest smile, the most genuine laugh, and her eyes sparkled. She's dearly missed. She was born in St. Paul, Minnesota in 1940. And from the time she was a little girl, she knew the two things in life she wanted most were to be a school teacher and to be a grandma. She managed to do both of these things exceptionally well. She was tremendously proud of her children and her five grandchildren and inspired countless other children over her 30 plus years as a school teacher. The last 20 or so of those years were here in Colorado teaching special education. She had a special ability to communicate and to teach autistic, autistic children and she felt grateful to answer her calling as an educator. After graduating McAllister College, she lived for a time in Boulder, starting our family there. Then off to Rochester, New York, Germantown, Tennessee, and then Scotch Plains, New Jersey, before moving back to Denver, where she lived in Park Hill for more than 30 years. Mom gave, gave birth to four sons and a daughter and had the patience of a saint. Before her 40th birthday, her beloved son Alex was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma on Valentine's Day and succumbed to the disease just a, over a year's time. The strength, faith, perseverance, and grit that mom embodied over the next 40 plus years was truly something to behold. She faced some remarkably challenging life events that would have caused many to give in, but she never did. She always managed to point out when things were particularly difficult that there was always somebody else who had it worse. I don't think she was capable of self-pity. Mom made sure with unmistakable clarity that we all understood she was very much at peace with the life she had lived and that she was ready to head on up to heaven when her time came. Mom left us so many gifts, and this was a special one that gives us all comfort. She looked forward to seeing Alex and her mom and dad again, and I know that's what she's doing now. No one will ever replace mom because people aren't meant to be replaced. People live on in all of those whose lives they touch. And Diane touched many. Before I begin, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the congregation and Reverend Sierra for extending this invitation during Lent. My brother, Gary Lawrence Block, passed away on November 28th, 2020, after contracting COVID-19. He was a caring father, brother, colleague, friend, and would soon have been a first-time grandfather. Gary was born to Dell and Peggy Block in Gardena, California, on October 4th, 1950, as the middle child of three brothers. He was the quiet child who was constantly exploring the workings of the world around him. He enjoyed taking things apart and occasionally putting them back together again. Gary loved tinkering with machines, and that led, to, led him to study the relatively new major of computer science at the University of California, Santa Cruz campus. He had an array of jobs, including working in telecommunications, 
starting his own business before settling in to his dream job at Jet Propulsion Laboratories as a software engineer. His software was on several space missions over the years. Gary enjoyed living in Newbury Park, California with his wife, Kathy, and, their, and welcoming their twins, Devin and Trina, in 1989. He shared with his children his love of nature, beginning with shore hikes in the local Santa Monica Mountains, and later overnight camping trips to his favorite national parks. Gary later moved to Montrose, California, significantly shortening his commute to work. He was even known to bike to work on occasion. He was an active member of his church, volunteered at the local high school, and was involved in the JPL hiking and radio clubs. Gary is survived by his daughter, Trina, his son, Devin, daughter-in-law, Alice, and his brothers and their spouses, Woody and Ann, Toby and Joan. Let us pray. Loving God, we pray to you for Gary Block and for all those whom we love but no, see no longer. Grant them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May his soul and the souls of all the departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We offer our prayers of thanksgiving for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week. One birthday omitted last week, Lucy Rowley, March 20th. This week, Kathleen Tucker, March 21st. Amanda Ayers. March 22nd, Fabian Gilchrist, March 23rd, and Madeline Sprague, March 26th. Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace. Send your blessings upon them, that their homes may be a haven of peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray in the words our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your heart and mind in the knowledge of love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.